Today we're going to evaluate a nice limit and we're going to evaluate it using Taylor series theories. That being said, I think there are probably some other nice ways of evaluating this limit that you could post in the comments. Okay, so we've got the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the square root of x plus 1 plus e to the square root of x minus 1 minus 2 times e to the square root of x. So let's start by observing that if x approaches infinity, this term approaches infinity, so does this one, so does this one. So we really have something that's kind of looking like infinity plus infinity minus two times infinity. So, uh, well, let's recall the Taylor approximation or maybe the Taylor series for the exponential function. It says that e to the u is the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of u to the n over n factorial. In other words, the first couple of terms go like this. You have 1 plus u plus u squared over 2 plus u cubed over 3 factorial plus u to the fourth over 4 factorial and so on and so forth. Okay, so we're going to start by rewriting all of these using that. So here we have this sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. And then after that, we'll have what? So we'll have the square root of x plus 1 to the n. In other words, we'll have x plus 1 to the n over 2 plus x minus 1 to the n over 2 and then minus 2 times x to the n over 2 and then all, and then all of this is over n factorial. Okay, great. Now we're gonna do a trick here for our simplification where we multiply the numerator as well as the denominator by one over x to the n over two. And we'll talk about why we do that. So now we have our limit as n goes to infinity. We have our sum as n goes from zero to infinity. And then since we're, like I said, multiplying the numerator and the denominator by one over x to the n over two, I'm gonna take an x to the n over two in the numerator. So I'm really just factoring it out. Maybe that would be a better way of thinking about that. And then left over, we'll have a one plus one over x to the n over two for this first term. And then we'll have a one minus one over x to the n over two for this second term. And then let's see, we'll have a minus two for this last term. Now what we'll do is, well, discuss why we did that. We'll notice that as n goes to infinity, sorry, that should be an x approaching infinity. One over x is almost all of the time less than one, which means these two terms can be expanded using binomial expansion formula, which let's recall it says one plus t raised to the r power is the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of r choose k t to the k. And that's where r is really any complex number. Okay, so let's do that expansion. So we have our limit as x is approaching infinity. We have our sum as n goes from zero to infinity. And then after that, what do we have? We've got our x to the n over two over n factorial. And then we have the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of, so this first one will expand like, let's see, n over two choose k times one over x to the k. And the second one expands almost exactly the same, but it's gonna be alternating. So n choose k, or sorry, n over two choose k minus one to the k over x to the k. And then finally minus two, but that's in fact outside of the expansion. But now let's notice that that minus two can be gotten rid of because it just cancels the zeroth term in this expansion. So we can change that from starting at zero to starting at one. And then next we can make a pretty nice observation and that is if k is odd, this whole thing equals zero because it's alternating, but notice has everything else the same. And then if k is even, then this whole thing is equal to two, well, whatever we have. So we've got our limit as x approaches infinity and then our sum as n is going from zero to infinity, x to the n over two over n factorial. And then the sum as k goes from one to infinity, where to encode in there that we're only keeping the even terms, 
we'll just change all the k's to 2 k's. I'm also going to factor this 2 out there. So that's going to give us n over 2, choose 2k, and then we'll have 1 over uh, x to the 2k. Okay, great. But now observe that we're summing only positive terms. So since we're summing only positive terms, well, this big sum is going to be larger than, well, a single one of the terms extracted. So let's see how we can use that. Let's maybe extract a certain term from this. Maybe an n equals, well, let's extract an n equals 6 term just for the sake of a choice. And then notice if n is equal to 6, k is still going from 0 to infinity, so we might as well take out a k equals 1 term from the choice when we take out an n equals 6. So this is all going to be bigger than the limit as x goes to infinity of, well, the n equals 6 term is going to give us what? So we're going to have 2x cubed over 6 factorial. And then, well, what's the k equals 1 term here? Well, it's going to be, let's see, a half choose 2. So a half choose 2, which that can be calculated. That's just a finite number. And then after that, 1 over x squared. Oh, but look at what's happening there. We have, in the end, some constant times x. So let's observe that this is equal to c, some constant times the limit as x goes to infinity of x. What's that constant? Well, it's just that 2 over 6 factorial and then the binomial coefficient. But the limit as x goes to infinity of x is simply infinity. So in the end, we have an infinite limit, and that's a good place to stop.